10 days ago, uh, John said that uh, the fundamentals of the economy are say, sound. Say I do not think that they are. Say it directly to him. Oh, well, uh, the, uh, John, 10 days ago, you said that the fundamentals <laughs> of the economy are sound. And are you afraid I couldn't hear him? Uh, that was then Senator Barack Obama and Senator John McCain during the first debate in 2008 election. And uh, again, uh, Jim Lehrer was going to have none of this say, hey, I'm the official. Talk to him, which I think is probably the way to do it. With us now, the architect of President Obama's two winning campaigns and a man who certainly should know uh, who has the advantage in 2016, David Pluff. He's currently an informal advisor to Hillary Clinton's campaign. David, uh, how important is tonight's debate I I as you look at dynamics that could change the race between now and Election Day? It's clearly the most important moment left. I mean, I'd assess it's like 75% of the rest of the campaign. Now, my view is Donald Trump's losing this race, so he's the one that has to change the trajectory tonight. But it's a great opportunity for Hillary Clinton. She's not as good a speechmaker as Barack Obama, and she's not the retail politician her husband was. But this should suit her well. So she's got a chance, I think, hopefully she'll speak from the heart and the mm -hmm. gut mm -hmm. about why she's doing this, and I think provide some more motivation for turnout and for Democrats to be a little more excited. But it's a huge moment. And the question for Trump is, I actually have questions. This is a really hard thing to do. Uh, right. And so does he have the patience and discipline to get through a 90-minute discussion about everything that's happening in the world? It's going to be fascinating. You know, we've, we've shown several polls that have come out over the past couple days, a tied race in Pennsylvania, tied in Colorado. Last Friday, we saw some Wisconsin numbers that showed Wisconsin was too close to call. What's going on out there in these states that Hillary Clinton should be at by five, six, seven points? Well, first of all, I mean, there's a new Cheetos Bud Light poll every hour with a different state. So a but lot of these, these are all kind of matching up. Well, what I'd well, say also, is, so don't disparage Cheetos and Bud Light. Yeah. I love them both. Willie and I <laughs> love them both. Adam. Okay, <laughs> right. And the no, Doritos what, Miller Light poll is also coming out today. So what I'd say is, what none of these polls accurately do uh, is to look at what a good campaign does is say you have a very good sense of. Who's likely to vote? You obviously want to affect that to the extent you can with turnout. How's 100% of the vote going to be allocated? Undecided vote, soft supporters. My, my uh, belief is Johnson and Stein's vote number will not be as high as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So when you look at that, you know, getting Trump to a win number in Pennsylvania, whether that win number is 50, 49, or 48, I just think mathematically it's Are you impossible. assuming Johnson and Stein voters are going to go for Hillary Clinton? I, well, I think they're not all going to go can there. can you? But I think she's got an opportunity to pick more of them up. So what you see is right now, I mean, my supposition, I may be wrong about this, we'll see in a few weeks, uh, is that, you know, the, the total they'll both get is probably more in the seven or eight range, which is still a lot, right? But when I, I Donald Trump, I think, has a harder ceiling than Hillary Clinton is. Yeah. I mean, getting above 45 nationally, I think, is going to be very difficult for Donald Trump. Really? You, you know, you talk to Democrats, you do the same thing, who are absolutely astounded that this race is even close. Given the way they feel about Donald Trump, they can't believe it's a close race. From your data point of view, why is it as tight as it is right now? Right. Well, it is, it is closer than we'd like, for sure, right? But I think that, first of all, you know, we're a pretty divided country. Yeah. So a Republican nominee against a Democratic nominee is probably almost guaranteed uh, to get into 43, 44 range. I think this is one of the reasons Mayor Bloomberg didn't run, would have been an appealing third party candidate. Both the Democrat and Republican nominee are guaranteed over 80% of the vote. So I think that, and there's no doubt that Hillary Clinton's numbers, favorable numbers, uh, are challenging. And I think she has an opportunity tonight on that stage to improve that. They're not going to change overnight, but I'd like to see her favorable numbers approach her vote number, which in some polls is 47, 48, let's say. So I think it's a big opportunity for her. Listen, unlike, there's no filter tonight. Maybe two-thirds of the people who vote in this election are going to watch the entire debate. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible moment for both candidates uh, to speak directly. I do still think it's important to get off to a strong start because of social media, because mm -hmm. a consensus will form. So you've got to get off to a good first 10 or 15 minutes. But remember, the important Benghazi moment that President Obama had with Mitt Romney was an hour in. So the whole debate still matters. John Heilman. Wow. David, you said over the summer at a Bloomberg event at the Republican convention that you thought Hillary Clinton had a 100 percent chance of winning the election. 100% chance. You still think she has a 100% chance of winning the election? Mm. I do. I know that sounds crazy given, but you know, getting close doesn't matter in a presidential election. You have to win. And the reason I'm so confident is now we need Democrats to f fight and organize and turn out. There's no doubt the Obama coalition isn't as motivated as we like. But if you look at Pennsylvania, Colorado, Virginia, New Hampshire, Florida, I think Donald Trump has a very difficult time getting to the win number. Now, it could be that states like Ohio and Iowa fall into the Trump camp. I don't like to see that. But again, she would still be over 300 electoral votes. Mark? Um, 
field organizing and television are two areas where the Trump campaign is has been very far behind. They're catching up to some extent, but they'll end up far behind. Does that matter? Does that hurt his chances in some meaningful way? I think it does. I mean, we always thought that the, the campaign is basically your field goal unit. And, you know, it can be worth anywhere from a point to three. So I think it does. I think they've got a, the Clinton campaign has a very smart field operation. It's based on smart analytics and data. And they are advertising. Television advertising is less important in presidential races every cycle. But you still have undecided voters out there. Democrats are trying to motivate to vote. So that does matter. It's not as important as the candidate's strengths and weaknesses and messages, but it matters on the margins. And, you know, this race may be closer than we'd like. You know, I think, you know, but her lead coming out of the convention was unnaturally large. And we've seen that shrink a little bit. But I actually believe the race is likely to open up a little bit for her in the next four or five weeks. Now, that doesn't mean she's going to win by eight or ten. But, you know, could she end up winning this nationally from four to six? I still think that's quite possible. Can a candidate 100%. win? Can a candidate win without the type of get out the vote operation that you guys had in eight and twelve? Sure, if, if, so, if they've just got enormous momentum and there's strong winds blowing out there and they're surfing, it's almost like no matter what you do, you're right. going to win. I don't think that's where we are. So, again, I think states like Florida, you look at a state like Florida or North Carolina, where turning out difficult to turn out voters is so incredibly important. I do think Clinton has an advantage. Did you, put a, did you put a number on the extraordinary effort your campaign did in 8 and 12 for, to, to get out the vote, the remarkable targeting? I mean, you guys followed up on what Ken Melman did in 2004 so effectively for Bush, but it matter, you said it matters on the margins. Is it 1%, 2%? What did you guys figure out after 12, that get out the vote right. operation? Well, it depends on the state, because there are some states, as I mentioned, states like Nevada, Florida, North Carolina, matters a great deal. Now, the candidate, so Barack Obama was the reason we won, and his message. Right. And just like the turnout effort that Bush and Melman did in 04 in Ohio was really historic. Um, but that was, those voters were motivated by Bush, and the campaign's right. just there to materialize that and vote. So it can matter from one to three points. Yeah. Uh, and I think that uh, in all likelihood, you're going to see, like in a state like Florida, we won it by a point. We'd win it in 2016 by 2.5 just through demographic drift alone. Okay? Yeah. And I think Clinton will probably do better with some white voters in the southern part of the state and the northern mm -hmm. part of the state than we did. So wow. that's where I think it becomes, I know 100% sounds crazy, but yeah, I'm going to stick with it. Because the Electoral College mm -hmm. puzzle here is definitely in Hillary Clinton's advantage. Only, yeah. only problem is everyone's been wrong about Trump every step of the way. So that's the only thing we're we shall about, 100% thing. Um, every step of the way. All right, well, thanks I, for being with us, David. I, I, and uh, you, work, you work for a great company. I know. I was just saying before, I, I haven't had a bad experience with Uber yet. Of course, I just jinxed myself. So, yeah, you know, really. It's great to hear. Really Providing right. a lot of work opportunity to people out there and getting people around their cities. No, no right. doubt about it. Hey, uh, David Plot, very, thank very you. good to have you. Thanks. Still ahead. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.